Hi there, Coach Sage Candy of sagerunning.com here. I'm Coach Sandy Nightpaver. Today we're gonna to do a really comprehensive, basic running form tutorial uh, that covers a lot of the stuff that we've done in other previous running form videos that you could also check out on our channel. But the goal is to run faster, more efficiently, and most importantly, to stay injury free so you can enjoy the sport. All right, let's get started. All right, what we see here is a nasty heel strike. You're landing way too far in front of your center of gravity uh, on the heel. It's causing a reactionary force, Newton's third law. Uh, going up your shin, up your knee, jamming your hip could cause a lot of pain, a lot of injury, and it's terribly inefficient. We call this a breaking force because you're landing so far out in front of your body with this heel strike, uh, it's really a risk for injury and a lot of pain. The correct way to land is to land underneath your center of mass uh, with a slight forward lean. You're landing more on your midfoot. Uh, your foot's coming down more flat if you see it. It's not a heel strike. You're not landing on your toes either, but uh, keeping that foot underneath the body as you land. And a cue for this is usually to take over 170 steps per minute. Uh, obviously at faster speeds, you might take a slightly higher stride rate, uh, but even at slow speeds, you want to keep that stride rate nice and quick, nice and light to reduce the impact force and improve your efficiency. Imagine you're scraping your foot across the ground with your leg motion. Uh, if you imagine the ground is eggshells, you're trying to not break the eggshells. Uh, so you really want to focus on the backswing of the leg. In traditional constructs and chi and pose methods, they say the, the legs are like wheels turning underneath your body, which is good, but there's no magic uh, momentum magically propelling you forward. There needs to be a push-off force. And the action that happens with your trailing leg behind your body is really a lifting of the heel after your foot comes back. You're lifting your heel up. And likewise, you're also elevating your shin. The shin of your trailing leg is going to reach over parallel or at least parallel with the running surface and even at higher speeds you might be kicking your butt almost uh, with your heel coming up into your butt uh, if you're sprinting but even at slower speeds you want to make sure there's that heel lift and the shin is getting elevated in the back. Another common mistake we call sitting in the saddle with the body position. It means riding your hips way too low. Instead, you want to focus kind of on thrusting your pelvis and your hips forward, like at the moment of deepest penetration. This is going to allow your knee to lift up a lot more efficiently and a lot easier. Uh, cue for this is to run tall. Uh, try to keep a straight line with your whole body. Elevate the chest like uh, imagine there's a rope pulling you towards a skyscraper at a 45 degree angle off in the distance. This is going to open up your diaphragm, allow you to breathe more efficiently. Likewise, keeping your chin up is also going to open up your trachea, open up your throat, and allow you to kind of breathe more efficiently and relax so you could really flow uh, with your stride. The arm motion, a common mistake we see is people hunching over. Uh, they tense up and their hand will cross the center midline of their body with too much of a twisting motion. Likewise, you don't want your arms flying out to the side uh, away from your body. And if you carry your arms too low, sometimes that adds to the torque. So it's really a matter of keeping your arms swing going straight forward and backward rather than having any lateral side to side movement. Uh, for a lot of people, a 90 degree angle about with the elbow joint, right angle, uh, is going to be most efficient. Uh, there are some exceptions with some really fast runners who have a, a higher arm carriage, as you see in the example here. But for most people, generally, just keeping the shoulders relaxed, keeping the hands relaxed. Imagine you're holding uh, some potato chips that you don't want to break or you don't want to drop. It's going to allow uh, your traps to relax, your shoulders to relax, so you don't tense up. Because if you're tensing up, uh, you're not going to run very efficiently. And it's really about keeping that arm swing nice and relaxed and uh, just going in sync with your legs. So thanks so much for watching our running form video. Uh, I hope these tips help you. And just another tip, it's always a good idea to have somebody film you. A lot of people think they have great running form and then somebody films them and they're like, oh, maybe that's not so good and I should work on that. So just a tip, have somebody film you a treadmill or having somebody on a bike um, tends to work best. 
Thanks so much for watching. Be sure to subscribe to Sandy's channel, Running Wild, uh, to believe. And for more tips and tutorials coming out in the sport. Uh, and stay tuned for more from Via2Max Productions.